Okay, stay calm. I really do not like this keyboard. And you might be asking why, didn't they fix most of the bad stuff that was happening on the previous one? CNC bad, no more CNC, plastic now. Plate mounted stabilizers to screw on stabilizers. Cherry MX switches with a choice, but now you don't even have to choose anything, there is no choice whatsoever. Aluminum plate, it is still an aluminum plate. Tray mount, and we are still on tray mount. I think those are still very minor things, I'm still okay with those. Let's just start with our unboxing and slowly dive deeper into this. This is the PewDiePie K1 Pro, it is being priced at about 160 US dollars. Gotta say the box looks hella sick, I really like it, all the designs on it really fits a PewDiePie team, it looks really cool. But yeah, in it you'll find a bunch of accessories, a screwdriver, a keycap and switch puller with their logo there, USB-C wire, a black spacebar and screws. And then we have the main attraction, the keyboard in a sleeve, very nice. So here's a quick rundown of the keyboard and its features as advertised. A 60% keyboard with 34 RGB LEDs under the hot swappable PCB to illuminate your desk. A first of its kind custom PewDiePie wave design engraved into the chassis. Full RGB consisting of 18 different modes. 5 pin hot swappable PCB so you can fully customize your keyboard. Bluetooth 5.1 allows you to connect to 4 devices simultaneously. Screw-in stabilizers to help suppress movement and rattle. And my favorite part of all these, beautiful sound. With the addition of sound dampening and acoustic foam, rattle and pings are greatly reduced. So let's test that out. This is what the keyboard sounds like. So you might be thinking, was my mic broken or why was there such a high pitch beeping sound? Well that was actually not my microphone having any issues, it was actually the RGB. The RGB is creating a high pitch noise. Beautiful sound. Let's just take this whole thing apart and see what's in this bad boy. First up, we're gonna remove the keycaps and we're gonna remove the switches. Well, take a look at this, the switch puller that came with the keyboard. So yeah. Uh, there is very little tolerance for you to remove switches on the top layer and bottom layer. You're gonna have to b basically bend the whole case to remove your switches. So I unscrewed all the screws that were holding this keyboard together and supposedly you are supposed to be able to remove everything with just lifting it up or just dropping it down. But this is the point that triggers me the most. There's some sort of magnet and like double-sided tape attached to the plate and the case so that it's really hard to remove for some reason. I don't know why it's there. It's on the top and bottom of the case. It's... Why would you do this? I don't understand what's the function for those things being there. I don't, like, there's literally no function. It's just a magnet with some double-sided tape on both sides on the top and bottom of the case. I think I'm gonna have a heart. So yeah, I ripped it out. Let's take a look at everything individually. Starting off with our case. It's made of plastic, honestly feels very cheap. It's insanely light. Aside from that, it's pretty decent in the wise of not having any defects inside or outside the case. You have your tray mount mounting points. It looks compatible with other PCBs, but I wouldn't recommend it. Not all the points are there for you to install the PCB. At the back, we have four rubber feet with one sticker. Very nice. Overall, I think the main selling point of the chassis is the PewDiePie Wave custom design and that part looks pretty decent to me. Next up is our PCB. It is a 60% PCB with north-facing perky RGB and underglow. Without any compatibility to any softwares, no softwares built for it, it doesn't come with any softwares, you're gonna have to use your function keys to change your RGB and any other functions you wanna do with it. The best thing about this PCB is probably it supports screw-in stabilizers. Now we're on to our plate. It is an aluminum plate. It's your very basic aluminum plate. It scratches really, really easily. Once you're done removing your switches, you basically will have a scratched up plate. Stabilizers. This is one of the best things the keyboard has. The stabilizers are screw-in. I think it's non-branded, but it looks good enough, so we'll find out after we loop them. Foam. As they mentioned, with the addition of sound dampening foam, acoustic foam, the only thing they have is a plate foam, and without any case foam, this plastic case will sound extremely hollow, which is why it sounded like that, so... But, I would say this is a pretty good try. Plate foam is pretty good. So yeah, to be honest, I actually don't really like this keyboard as of now, but I'm still gonna try to make this sound better. First up, we're gonna add some foam to make sure it doesn't sound as hollow. We're gonna loop the stabilizers, change the switches out, and turn off the RGB. So let's do that. Foam. We're gonna start off with some basic foam. 
cut it to size, ensure that all mounting points are not blocked and we are done. As for the stabilizers, we're just gonna throw on some good old lube with Crytox Tool 5 Grade 0 with no holy mods whatsoever, just lubing. As for switches, Gideron rates aren't that bad, but I'm still gonna swap them out. I have some KTT strawberries that have been lubed with Crytox Tool 5 Grade 0. They are 5 pin linear switch with an actuation force of 43 grams. The top and bottom housing are made from polycarbonate and have a palm stem. So I installed the switches. At this point, we are nearly done upgrading it. All we have to do is throw on the keycaps. One more thing I noticed about the keycaps while putting them on. In terms of material, I think it's done really well. It's a really thick material. I don't think it's gonna shine or whatever. It's good material. But for printing, I think they could have done better. Most of them are off-center. Some of them have different spaces in between. Look at these two shift. They are totally different. Aside from all these, the other keys are actually fine. So I'm gonna show you guys how the keyboard sounds after I've done everything to it. First things first, you can only turn off the per key RGB. So me turning off the per key RGB actually makes the high pitch sound a little softer, but the sound is still producing itself from the underglow and I cannot turn off the underglow. Aside from all that, some final thoughts on the keyboard. I think this keyboard really depends on where you're standing in this community or just in general. If you're coming from the keyboard community and you wanna pay $160 for a keyboard like this, I don't think you would be happy with it. I think you would be much happier getting a Keychron Q2 or something else in general. But if you are coming from just the normal public without any knowledge of the keyboard hobby, I think this keyboard is a fairly decent built keyboard for the general public. If you gave me a choice between a Razer or this, I would probably pick this because at least it has hot swappable functions and screwing stabilizers. I think there's a huge step up compared to normal pre-built keyboards so that's a pretty good thing overall i'll give this keyboard a solid 5 out of 10 i think that's pretty good anyways we have come to the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed this video go ahead and click the like button and subscribe i'm trying to hit 50k comment down below your thoughts on the keyboard and tell me whether you are from the keyboard hobby or not and what you think of the keyboard in general and whether my points made sense so aside from all that i'll see you guys in the next one peace